Okay, so I've bored all the holes to locate all the components and uh, I just got the last two to do. I'm just going to tap them. And these are just some uh, M3 by 5 screws that I had a bag of, so they're close to the right size. I'm just going to use those. That's it. That should be all of them. Just some uh, little small M3 by 5 uh, screws here. That should work just fine. Um, so now we'll mount all the components on the panel and then we can start wiring it up I still need to uh, I was missing my power supply the one I had before was just a 5 volt power supply I was using it just to kind of mock up everything and my tri-power power supply came in today this is a 24 12 and 5 volt and I need 24 volts because of my uh, power draw bar that I plan on adding in the future so I wanted to go ahead and make sure I had 24 volts that's good that will slide right under there So, and hold that in, it looks good. Yeah, that'll be good. Alright, and I'm also, uh, this is on order, it's already shipped, but my C11G, actually this is a C11GS board. waiting on it. still need to mount it, but I'll, I can do that later at some point. Um... Alright, so now that all, all the holes are drilled and tapped, now I can start getting everything uh, mounted. So here's the International Power 48 volt uh, 500 watt power supply. And in order to wire this power supply up, I want to do that before I actually install it to my board. Uh, get it kind of pre-wired. Um, the way these transformers work is you have incoming power, uh, 120 volts in this case, and we need to apply the AC to pins 1 and 3, and we need to jump her out pin 1 and 5 and 3 and 7, and that will get our 48 volt uh, output. So. kind of hard to see but this is pin 1 and 5 and 3 and 7 so what we're going to do is I've just made up these wires and we're going to go like this like so and I'll solder those two connections that'll get our jumper from 3 to 7 and we'll also apply power, our AC, to pin 3. And then we'll do uh, 1 and 5. And like so.
All right, and now I'm just going to solder these two connections. And uh, we should be good. Let me see if I can get it at an angle where we can... It's not going to st stay stable like that. Okay, there we go. And then we'll do the neutral side. All right. And so now we have our power going to our transformer. Our uh, 110 volts in our ground, our negative. And it goes from pin one to five. Got that jumper and three to seven. Okay, so we've got our power supply all wired up now. And uh, we can get it mounted to our panel. And then here are connections coming out of the power supply uh, here and here. And it's already fused. I'll leave that fuse in, but uh, once it leaves here, it's going to go to individual fuses for these stepper motors. Now that we have our power supply wired up, we can start mounting everything in the panels.
Okay, well, I've got everything mounted to the panel and I went ahead and sat it inside the cabinet. There's several more things that we need to mount, but before I secure this panel in here, I want to go ahead and drill all the holes into the side of the cabinet. So, we've got our braking resistor that we're going to be installing and I'm going to be putting it right here. So I just need to mark the holes for that. And I've got my power on switch that I've got to bore a hole and mount it like so. And then we'll have power coming in and then power going down to our terminal strip and feeding all of our electronics. So I've got to bore a hole here and bore and tap some holes there and get that mounted. Okay, so I, I got the panel sat down inside the enclosure. I've got my brake resistor mounted and I've got my uh, main disconnect mounted. Uh, you can see this will be the front side here and then the main disconnect will be up top. So everything looks like it's got pretty good clearance and uh, we should be doing we should be okay it's coming together pretty nice I think uh, the next thing I want to do is I need to figure out all my connections going out of the box and I also have to mount a fan so I think what I'm going to do is on this top plate I'm just going to mount all that stuff on the top plate uh, I want my fan up top so it can draw air out. And I got to think about bringing air in. Originally, I thought maybe through the bottom panel because I could cut the circle out uh, with my CNC mill. Make it nice and neat. But now I'm thinking the cabinet may be ended up real close to the ground, if not on the ground. So, on the floor. So, uh, maybe I could do the back of the panel here bring air in like this or I can bring it through the front here but then it'll be right up against my transformer and I'm not sure how good of a flow we'll get uh, through the panel okay so I've laid out the hole for the fan I'm gonna make a round hole because I may end up putting another fan to pull air in and one to pull air out who knows uh, I could have just cut it square that would have been fine as well so anyhow I've got my hole laid out I need to figure out how I'm gonna cut this hole out now I could saw it out or drill it out obviously it's you know too big to put in a mill so I thought I would use my portable milling machine uh, I know a lot of you have these so what we have is a Dremel and I've got an eighth inch end mill in here and this is just a router base and what I've done is I've bolted a bearing. It doesn't really need to be a bearing. It just happened to be that the bearing was close enough to the to get me to size I need. And I'm just kind of going to go around it like so and cut this out. So uh, you could use anything round. So let's see what happens. It's probably going to be loud and uh, so... There'll be some background music, I'm sure. But let's just take a look and see what we got.
Okay, well I got the hole finished with my uh, portable milling machine. I went back with just a little grinding wheel and kind of cleaned it up. It didn't turn out as uh, perfect as I thought. The uh, little base on the uh, Dremel here got a little wobbly and it, it started to slide up on me, which caused my end mill to slide down and it got to where it was just on the shank the shaft and not the actual cutting bit so it wasn't really cutting and it kind of caused it to lift up and veer off but ah, it worked it's a little jagged but not quite as cleanly as I had planned well I got my C11GS board in and I got it mounted before I could mount it to the board though I realized that you can't just mount it directly up against the metal there are some connections underneath and there's exposed uh, solder so you need to space the board up off the panel a little bit you can buy little plastic spacers but I didn't have any and I didn't really think about it so I had to improvise and what I came up with was I found this little uh, big mechanical pencil it's the kind that you know you click at the end and the lead comes out and I just kind of tore it apart and I ended up with this plastic tube and so what I did was I just took this tube stuck it in my lathe and turned off uh, four quarter inch spacers those spacers were just enough to get it lifted up off the board and give me a nice uh, spacing so I'll save this big uh, mechanical pencil you never know I might need some more spacers in the future uh, still waiting on some cannon plugs and stuff for my uh, top plate So I don't really want to commit to making any cuts in that plate until I get those plugs in and make sure I got everything laid out the way I need it so Can't move forward on that I did get the grill for the fan mounted and that hole cut out so in the next video We'll start landing power in the panel We'll get our run our 110 volts, our 48 volts out to the stepper motors. We'll do our control wiring to the breakout board for the steppers, uh, the VFDs, our 5 volts, our 12 volts, and get everything wired up. And I'll probably break that down into several videos just so they won't be so long and they'll be more concentrated on specific areas inside the panel. So thanks for watching the videos. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thumbs up if you like the video. Importantly, be safe.